to this week's Foundation Friday. Uh, we are here today to discuss the Mark Schoenwetter Holocaust Education Foundation. Uh, joining me today, I have Ann Arnold, who's one of the founders of the foundation, and Michael Ash, SVP of Flagstar Bank, like Flagstar Financial, Flagstar Bank. Flagstar Financial and Leasing. Perfect. Thank you. Should have got that right the first time, but you know, no one's perfect, Michael. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and I'm going to start off with you, if you don't mind, do you mind just kind of introducing, you know, the foundation and, you know, what drove you to start? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having us on today. And thanks everyone for watching. The foundation actually was started in 2020, and we are the only foundation actually in the country that funds Holocaust education to teachers, and the money goes directly to the students. So the Holocaust Education, Mark Schumer Holocaust Education Foundation, we provide grants to educators. The grants are capped at $1,000 for them to be able to bring into the classroom materials such as books, programming, Holocaust survivor speakers, being able to help subsidize costs of field trips. Our mission is really to promote not only the education of Holocaust education, but to promote and to give grants to teachers nationwide so that they can teach anti-hate initiatives, respect and kindness through Holocaust education. So it's not just about teaching about the past, it's about how does that past relate to today? Because our vision is to make sure that we inspire these students to treat everybody with kindness and respect. And that's kind of like our motto. The reason being is Mark Schumacher happens to be my father and he's a Holocaust survivor. And so I grew up my whole life knowing his story. It quite honestly took me a long time to finally get it down. And I did finally sit him down and started with a blog, eventually wrote a book. And when the book was published, we added curriculum content to it. And we started speaking in schools all over. And we realized very quickly, schools would hear my dad speak. And then they would like be like, oh, great. Can we bring the book in? Sure. How much is it? Oh, a classroom set of books is $300. They would, there was one school had to go to their local synagogue to get a donation for $300 to bring books into the classroom. And I said, really? Are you kidding me? Don't you guys have a budget? They're like, no, our budgets are cut. We don't have any money and we can't do any kind of programming. We can't do anything. We always have to look for donations. So I started going back and researching. And sure enough, you can find money if you want to do a specific, if you want to go to a specific museum, you might be able to find money for that museum. But if you're a teacher and want to create a very well-rounded curriculum, there's no money there for it. And so quite honestly, my whole life, I was trying to figure out my purpose. I work, I have a career, I have kids, and that gives you a lot of satisfaction. But there was always this thing in the back of my head of, why did my dad survive? And nobody else did it. I mean, his, he lost his father. We lost all of our relatives. He's from Poland. He survived in Poland. He never left. But he survived off the goodness of the Polish people that helped hide him and save him when he was living in floorboards and in pigsties. And I said to myself, well, what's my purpose? Why did he survive when so many others didn't? And when this all happened, when we realized that there was no funding, it kind of was this light bulb moment for my sister and I. And I said, if we're going to do something, thank God our dad is still with us. He's wonderful. He still speaks. He's very active. And we said, we want to do something to honor him, not to remember him one day. And I finally found my purpose. I figured out what that was. And it's to teach this next generation about kindness and respect, because you can't turn the TV on or listen to the news or read a paper without hearing about something horrible happening in the world and how horrible there's some kind of hate that happened against some group. It doesn't have to just be Jewish and anti-Semitism, but between racism and bigotry and Asian hate. I mean, it's horrible what's happening. And so we felt that this was our way of saying, we all are stronger together and we all have a choice and we're choosing to make our voices be the voice of kindness and respect with the hope that we can drown out the voices of violence and hatred. So that's what really inspired us to start the foundation. And we've actually, you know, we're really excited for where we've come from and where we're going. No, that's, a, that's awesome. Um, 
I knew none of this beforehand. I did a bad job of doing my research. So um, that's inspiring. Uh, Anne, and, and thank you for sharing and, and all that work that you're doing. That's, that's quite amazing. And, and kudos to your dad for the adversity that he went through. <laughs> I, I, I can't imagine. Um, and like the TV behind me, that's pretty much what you see on it. Because <laughs> why would you want to watch anything else? <laughs> the exactly. negativity in the world. Um, Michael, so how did you get involved um, with the foundation? So Ann and I go back to our college days, which I'm not yeah. going to give you the year. Um, <laughs> but Ann and my wife go back to actually seventh grade. So okay. um, our family and, and Ann's family, which includes my, my parents and, and her parents and the families and weddings and bridal parties and bar and bat mitzvahs have been intertwined, you know, since at least I went to college, which was many, many years ago. Um, know Anne's father and mother very, very well. Their story is, 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 is fascinating. Their survival is fascinating. Anne's passion, as you could hear and feel through the, the video, um, is, is, is genuine and authentic. And the book she wrote in 2016 was a book you just don't put down. You pick it up and five hours later, you're done. Because again, it's not a book about the Holocaust, right? It's a book about her father, their mother, his mother and his sister surviving with the help of people throughout Poland in, in, in ways you just, you can't imagine. And as much as you can try to picture it, you just can't. So as soon as we read the book and continued to talk to Anne, uh, as Anne was getting approached from people to do different things, we basically just raised our hand and said, how can we help? And this was a very easy, uh, easy and satisfying way to to help her and, and help get the message out. Because as Anne said, it's it's more than Holocaust education. Um, but it's important today more than ever, especially with a generation that are, are soon going to be no longer with us. So we you need to keep on getting the message out there. Well, well said. And, and Anne, you mentioned earlier um, some grants um, that you provide. Um, you know, when people make a donation, um, besides like like the grants, like where else do the funds go? So our every dollar, well, most of the dollars, we have a tiny bit of insurance we have to pay, but we are all totally volunteer. Yeah. Yeah, but, I get that. Exactly. <laughs> like, but, we have, we uh, have a 501c3 and I have to pay insurance. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but we do, so we raise money and the money goes directly to the teachers for them to use towards the students. So since inception, we started in 2020 giving out grants and we've already reached over 73,000 students nationwide covering 30 different states. We've given out over $195,000 in grants, about 304 grants that we've given out. And the thing is that it's just grown every year because our first year, I remember when we launched our applications, we got like 30 applications and we were like so excited that we got 30 applications. We gave $5,000 out. And then the next year that doubled, then the next year. And so last year, as an example, we got in touch with the Department of Education in Michigan and we let them know about our foundation. And previous to that, we maybe had two or three applications from Michigan combined. Last year, the department, the State Department of Education let the teachers in Michigan know we had 91 applications from Michigan alone of teachers looking for oh. funding. And that that's to me, awesome. that just shows that not only the need that's out there, the desire of the teachers and the educational community to teach this and the impact that we can make in every state. Only 25 states mandate Holocaust education, yet each one of those states do not talk about funding. Mandating just means you have to teach it, but they are inconsistently talking about funding and a lot of them don't provide funding. So they're leaving it up to the teachers to determine how that gets translated into the classroom. Sure. So for us, the impact is not only about what we're giving, but I love seeing the results. We got a teacher in North Carolina that sent us a message and said that they live in a very rural part of North Carolina. If you're from North Carolina, it's called Yancey County. And it's supposedly a very rural part and the there's a club called the 88 Club, which is a notorious Nazi youth group that actively recruits students from their middle school to join. This is the United States today. Wait, wait, wait so, so this is going today. on now? This is going on right now in this country. There are 
Nazi youth groups, neo-Nazi youth groups that actively recruit students from very rural parts of the country and their schools. And this school wrote us a letter saying, because of your grants, we now have two middle school classes that are learning about the Holocaust to understand what it is that they are getting preached. To me, that was like, that was the moment that I was like, okay, this is why we're doing it. Yeah. I mean, one of the students in Michigan wrote us a a, um, testimonial and said the biggest thing that I learned from all of this was, and I'm going to read it, not to judge or treat people differently just because of their race, ethnicity, or religious beliefs. That was an 11th grader that wrote that in his reflection. So the, the impact is tremendous. Our money is going directly to where the students get it. It's not going towards professional development. It has to go directly to where the students can benefit for, from it. Perfect. Thank you for, for sharing that, Anne. Um, Michael, I guess just kind of in closing here, when people of our equipment finance community uh, watch this interview and read our write-up and learn, learn more about the foundation, what, what can they do to you know, further the cause? And help out. Oh, thank you. Yep. Yeah, thank and 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 thank you again, as Ann said in the beginning, for for the forum. Uh, it's it's just like anything else. Whether it's your time, whether it's donation, whether it's material, that whether it's just getting the word out, right? It, it's more and more important. Um, from an equipment finance standpoint, one of the things, Jesse, and I'm sure you you agree with this, and I've been in the industry for thirty plus years, is that everyone, while they're competitors everyone supports each other and everyone wants to lift each other up. And I find that very, um, I, I, I love that about our industry. And I don't think there's many industries you can talk that way about. And so this would be another way for people to do that. And I know you've seen it before with people doing bicycle rides and, and fundraising for cancer and other things that goes on that there's a lot of people in our industry that, that care, that care about a lot of different things. Um, and this is just a, a, a you know a, a great way to to send a, a positive message in in today's world. Um, on the offside, you know, it's also a good DEI program for a lot of the corporations out there that are looking for something to do. Um, sure. But but it, but again, it's just uh, you know any way people can pass on the message, you know, whether it's through LinkedIn or or their social media, awareness is is the key. And if I if you don't mind, if I may just add to that. In November, we have we we have a worldwide event called Journey for the Living, and it is a 15 mile walk, run or ride. It's a fitness challenge and people are encouraged to create teams and to take the challenge. 15 miles is the distance my dad had to go when he escaped the Nazis to the first ghetto where they thought they would be safer. And so. What we do is we created this challenge and so schools do it, they create teams and for schools, we it's completely free, we don't charge any registration and it's a way for them to teach the Holocaust in kind of, I hate to use the word fun, but in, in, in a different way to get the kids to understand and to think about it and to kind of put their feet to the ground, as you say. But for corporations, what we've had in the past is corporations that are creating teams and encouraging their employees to create teams. And so they'll create a team within their company. And the corporation, like as Michael said, it goes kind of falls under that DEI umbrella where they're always looking for some kind of activity or something to bring our community together. And it's more, as I mentioned, than the Holocaust. It's about how do we walk as how do we as a community come together to support kindness and respect? Respect. Well, let's take this month of November to do it together. And at lunch, whoever wants to participate, let's all like walk around the block, you know, every day for the month of November or whatever it may be. Oh, okay. so that's another, that's an actual tactical way that companies can look to see how they could possibly encourage or support their employees to support. Yeah, it's not 15 miles in one shot. No, it's 15 that, miles that was, that was my question. I was like, <laughs> nope. like it's 15 <laughs> miles during the entire month. You have one month to do the whole 15 you say, miles. Fit, you say fitness challenge. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's imagine. So it's, it's since it takes the whole month, these students are doing it. And the teacher at the end of the month will say, OK, so how long did it take us to do those 15 miles? Yeah. We had to go out every single day at lunch and walk around the track one or two times and this man did it with the clothes on his back when he was a child with his mother in the cold running for his life 
So it kind of solidifies it to you. Yeah. Nope. Nope. That makes um, complete sense. And, you know, appreciate you sharing that. Um, Ann and Michael, um, I will also put at the end of this video, um, the email address, not email address, the web address for the foundation. Um, and Ann, if you want your contact information on there, just Wonderful. let me know and I'll gladly um, share that as well. Thank you very much. But um, I appreciate both of your time today. Um, you know, kudos to you for starting, you know, the Mark Schoenwater Holocaust Education Foundation. Uh, I, like I said, I didn't know much coming into this interview, but I definitely appreciate the, the hard work that you're doing. It's needed. And thank you, Jesse, for thank what you, you Jesse. did. Yeah, and thank you for your time, Jesse. Okay, we'll talk soon. Thank you very much. Thanks. Take care. Thank you.